tell you. When Jesus, uh, uh, back in the day, the Bible said when he saw the blood, yeah. he passed over. He passed over when he saw the blood. The blood still worked right for us.
be in the house of the Lord, in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Did you enjoy your... Yes, I did. <laughs> Amen. And I'm glad nobody overdid it. Well, anyway. <laughs> it's wonderful to be, to have family around and to be able to celebrate, laugh, and talk. Amen. It's wonderful. Um, one thing, when uh, James and, just a moment, <laughs> that was Tesley, uh, spoke, um, our other guests didn't have anything to say. So, Sarita, <laughs> Amen. And Evangelist Paulette, did you want to say hello to us? Amen. Amen. Always want to acknowledge our people. Amen. Um, I'm glad that uh, everyone enjoyed yesterday. Now, I'm not trying to put a damper on it, but you know what? That was an hour celebration. That's right. In 1776, they declared our freedom from England. But our parents were slaves. And it wasn't until, what, 18, 1865 when the Emancipation Proclamation, that gave us our freedom. Anybody know anything about Juneteenth? Uh, that's when we need to celebrate. Amen. That's when we got ours. And, and of course, you can have your own whenever the Lord saved the, the, the day the Lord saved you. But as far as a race, Amen. Juneteenth. That's our celebration. Now I'm not trying to down the fourth. No, that's that's good. But that wasn't our celebration. And, and, and what it says, the people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. You know, and as long as we celebrate with them, that, that, that's fine, but we were slaves. And, and history says that, you know, George Washington led the troops and, and uh, got the freedom, but George had slaves. Wow. And they sit down and they wrote that beautiful document. All men are created equal. What happened with us? <laughs> well, just thought I'd let you know something, you know, because we go through life not knowing what's going on, and, and, and as long as we don't know anything, they're happy. They tell you the the, the fourth. Celebrate on the fourth. Well, that's fine, but I was a slave on the fourth. <laughs> So next year, and somebody uh, help me remember and remind me, we're going to talk about Juneteenth. Because that's when we need to celebrate. That's when we got, our parents got their freedom. But then, even in that, sharecropping was just another form of slavery. As long as we were kept under the bondage, we were still... And the young folks, as long as you don't go to school and learn, you're going to be somebody's bond person. You need to go and get your education so you can be like Bianca. Command what you want. Get on the phone and call and get me a flight and reservations and do what I want to do. <laughs> but without an education, you're still a bond person. Waiting table somewhere in a cheap restaurant, pushing somebody's broom, cleaning up somebody's mess in the hospital. That's all right. I mean, you have a job, but it's still a bomb person. Well, okay, you gotta say amen. That's all right. 
But once you start getting out there and, 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 and finding out that you don't have what it takes to get along and you have to take that secondary job, you find out then that, ooh, pastor was right. I should have stayed in school and learned. I shouldn't have played around. I shouldn't have talked during class time. I should have worked. Well, listen, listen, listen. We were, I enjoyed my daughter here when she came in and she was talking yesterday. She said, Dad, I'm glad the way y'all taught us. She said that when I look at these people and, and, and I see the way they live and act, I'm glad y'all taught us different. You know, now, teenagers, listen, it sounds rough, but when you get there, you will appreciate Right. You, you will appreciate the teaching because if parents let you have your way, you'll think that you can go out there and do what you want. You can't. It won't happen. You have to have credentials to let these folks know I'm good. I got what it takes. I, I, I can do what you need. So let me in the door. They used to call it the what was it, breaking the glass shield, whatever it is, to get there, you know. And, and ladies, you still, you ought to be fighting harder because you're still behind. What do they say? Uh, women make, uh, what, one-tenth less than men at the same job? You ought to have your education say, hey, I, I demand change. But, when we settle, when we settle, then that's just the way it is. And they'll keep it that way as long as nobody says nothing. Well, okay, preacher, stop messing, let's go. <laughs> but one day, you're going to look up and say, man, I wish. Ah, uh, 2 Corinthians, the 12th chapter. 2 Corinthians, the 12th chapter. And begin at the 8th verse. Paul says, For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that he might depart from me. And he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. And I want to look at that middle portion. My strength is made perfect in weakness. And if I were to give you a title for anything, it's submission. Submission. When we're going through our situations and we cry out to God, Lord, I need deliverance, I need deliverance. When does God come? At the point of submission. You see, because God is not the kind of God that will overwhelm you and just take over your situation or take over your fight. But God says, if you hold your peace, I'll fight your battles. Now, when does that happen? At the point of submission. When you submit to God and say, yes, Lord, your will be done. That's what Jesus did. Now he was he was Jesus was was going through a struggle, you know, in the garden. Lord, if there's any other way, move this cup from me. See that that was his strength. But when he surrendered, nevertheless, Lord, not my will, but your will be done. And after he completely surrendered, it said he was so weak, so. And the angels had to come and minister to him to give him strength. And he went back into the public and he said, this day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. Now, 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 when you're ready, 
when your testimony has been tested and you come through, then you are ready to say, this day, this day, I have something to say because God has allowed me to go through and has brought me out on the victory side. But it's only at the point of submission. You see, because, because you see, sometimes I think people think that God is handicapped. You know, I have to help God out in this because this thing is so tough that, you know, and it seemed like I've been waiting so long, so I'm going to help God out. You know, you know how we are. If you don't get off me, I'm going to give you a piece of my mind. No, no, no. When do you get to the point of submission? God comes along and says, my grace, my grace is there. I can take you through anything because of my grace. Because you see, my strength is your strength, but not until you submit. Look at Isaiah, Isaiah, the 40th chapter. Isaiah, the 40th chapter. Mm. Isaiah 40 and the 29th verse. And he says, he giveth power to the faint. And to them that have no might, he increaseth strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary. And the young man shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. When does that happen? At the point of submission. Everyone you read about, when they come to the point of submission, the strength of God comes in. Oh, have you read your Bible lately? And you see the people of God going through, but at the point of submission, yeah, God comes through. Let's look at, at a very strong man, Samson. Samson was a man that did things because of his strength. You know, when they uh, messed over him, he got him some, he caught foxes by his own hand, tied their tails together, and lit, uh, lit their tails on fire and let them go through the fields, burnt their fields out. I'm going to teach these folks a lesson. Isn't that like us sometimes? Somebody's trying to say something, I talk to their hand. But God's grace says, speak that which will edify. When we come to the point of submission. Oh, but see, that, 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 that comes against us. Because we are people that don't want to come to the point of, oh, I don't have no strength. I don't have any recourse of my own. That's a, that's a hard point to come to. But that's the point God is bringing us, trying to bring us to. The point of submission. Then he says, my strength is made perfect in weakness. Ah, but that's the point of submission. That's where we've got to come to. Now, I don't know, I, I, I don't know if I've ever spoke anything like this, but and, and, and when it did, when God got to minister to me, I felt hurt. Oh, God, you know, because I'm like you. I want to get things done, but not in my timing, nor in my strength, nor in my intelligence, because it only comes at the point of submission. Oh, my goodness. Paul, Paul was hurting. Paul was hurting. And he wanted to get something done. He's just like us. Now, 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 look, God. Something got to be done. I've been going through this thing long enough. And, and you know, I got people to minister to. I got to go here and go there. God said, my grace is sufficient. Now, now if, you, if you think about that, if you sit and think about that, 
about that. In your times of trouble, it seems like God is a comedian. I mean, you're going through, you're hurting, and, 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 and you know, it's like your life is spiraling out of control. And God says, my grace is sufficient. Come on, I don't want to hear that. I want to hear something that's, you know, but no, my grace is sufficient. All you got to do is wait on me. He says in Isaiah, the way, when the weary, oh, young men shall utterly faint, but my grace is going to uphold them. When you get down to your last, when people stretch your last nerve, my grace is going to be there to strengthen you to do what you what I asked you to do. But it comes at the point of submission. Samson, he was the kind of guy that, like I said, if you heard it, he gon' he gon' he gon' get you. He, I mean, Samson was a, his strength. You know, they were taking him out, taking they had arrested him, and they were taking him to another city. And outside the city in the desert, Samson decided, I'm gonna do something about this. So the chains that they that they had tied up, his strength, and he picked up a jawbone of an ass and killed a thousand professional soldiers. Ooh, Samson was a mighty man. We're a mighty people. And if we come across a jawbone in our situation, how many times have you spoke up or did something when you should have kept quiet in the middle of your situations? But at the point of submission, God says, I've been waiting for you to stop. I've been waiting for you to quit. Oh God, when I was going through, yeah, but you were fighting. I wanted you to stop and let me. So at the point of submission, God said, my grace and my strength is sufficient for you. But it comes at the point of submission. So, Samson, he got with this woman, <laughs> Delilah. And isn't it something when we meet our match, someone that we didn't think, he didn't think a woman would bring him down? And we don't think that that person that we're associated with, we don't think they could take us down. I mean, <laughs> I got more education. I know. I know my way around, and I, I know the streets. But you keep fooling with mess. You keep fooling with mess. Even if it's somebody in church, you keep fooling with mess. The scripture says that how can two walk together unless they agree? Now, if you like to pray and seek God. And the person you partnering with don't like to pray, you in the wrong situation. Someone's going either they're going to pull you out of the prayer area, or you're going to pull them in. And we all like to think, I can do this. But no, sometimes God say, let it go. Let it go. Yeah, but that's my friend. I mean, we in church. And so, two shall be in a bed. One going to be taken. One going to be left. He's talking about church folks. Two going to be in a field. One going to be taken. The other going to be left. He's talking about church folks. He ain't talking about the world. And so if we don't agree, how can we accomplish the will of God? But Samson trusted this was his lady. That's why you need to be in agreement with God. Paul said that if your, if your partner wants to leave, if they're not living right, let them go. And you're free to marry. Only. Did you get that? Only in the Lord. That don't mean you're free to chase around any way you want to. <laughs> and it's good to have companionship, but 
what you got to watch. Companionship. Amen. And so Samson trusted this lady. Well, maybe he didn't want to, but he told us, and you weary my spirit. But, 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 she wanted something too. Now, what is it that people are pulling on you for? What is it that people are pulling on you? They're not just there for nothing. They're pulling for something. Anyway, Samson gave up his birthright, if you will. And the enemy came in and caught him sleeping. And they took away his strength. What's it going to take for people to take your strength? Is it pulling you away from church? Pulling you away from the Bible study? Pulling you away from prayer time? Pulling you away from fellowship with God? What is it that people are trying to pull you out of? Mm. Samson allowed them to take his strength. And he jumped up and said, just like before, I'm going to shake myself and I'm going to be good. Samson shook himself and found out, uh-oh, where'd he go? Where'd he go? See, you got you to be watchful unto pray. I've been missing prayer for the past two weeks. I miss Bible study. I miss Sunday school. I miss some no, The word, uh-oh, I haven't got what I think I got. Therefore, I'm vulnerable to the enemy. And they bound him up, took his eyesight, and put him to work like a, well, people say like a dog, but he was grinding like an oxen. See, they had this big grinding wheel, and, and they had this thing set so that corn kernels would fall down there, and they would get ground down. And Samson had to push that big rock around so it keeps rolling and grinding the wheat or grinding corn or whatever they were doing. That's worse than being a slave. But it's all because he didn't listen. See, that's the biggest trouble with church folks. I told you I didn't want to say this. Church folks don't want to listen to nobody. <laughs> But if you stay in prayer, if you stay in Bible study, if you stay in the church, keep yourself clean. The Bible says keep yourself unspotted from the world. But everybody thinks they know bad. And when they get in trouble, God, come right now. God says, well, you haven't submitted yet. Your freedom comes or your strength comes at the point of submission. When you get tired of yourself. Old folks used to say, you smelling yourself, ain't you? When you get tired of your own ways. When you get rid of your own thoughts. When your own strength gets you. When you get tired of your mess. Then God says, Ah, I tell you how he put it, and he giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increases strength. Hallelujah! God is waiting on you to submit to his will. That's what Jesus had to do. He submitted to the will of God. He just like you. He didn't want to suffer. His flesh didn't want to suffer. That's why he prayed so hard. God, if there's any other way, search and find. I sent you there for that purpose, to die. And if he had gotten his way, you wouldn't be here because salvation wouldn't be possible. But he had to look down the line and he seen you. And he says, I've got to go. I've got to go to the cross. So he submitted. And you, what have you got to look to? Your children, your grandchildren? 
Don't you want them to have what you have? Submit. Get into the word. Get some power. Get some strength so you can help them. It comes at the point of submission. But we've got to give up ourselves. Ourselves. Now, yesterday everybody had good food. Was there anything there that you said no? <laughs> no, it wasn't. We enjoy it. But see, there are times when we have to say no. I, 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 I give up. We were here Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. So I decided no, no goodies. As much as I love goodies, no, no goodies. This is the time that I set aside in my life to see God. And God, I'm giving up this time this, and all of my stuff for you. Because I want something. Hallelujah. I want something. But God said at the point of submission, all right, God, I give it up. Give it up. Oh, 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 isn't it something that at those times you get tempted so easily? Ooh, seem like people throw things at you. <laughs> Go to the store or something and say, hey, half price. When you wanted it, it wasn't. <laughs> they throw things at you, but you got to say no. Yeah, but that's it. You love that. No. Yeah, yeah, but you, you want that. that. No. So true. At, At the, the point of submission, yeah. God, God says, I got you. I got you. I got you. You have all the strength you need. See, because at other times, when they say that, you know, them little sweat beads pop out there, and you can feel yourself being pulled over there. But when you submit, God says, I got you. You ain't got to give in to that. I got you. Your, my strength is made perfect in weakness. I got you. You don't have to worry about what's going on in your life, whether it's on the job, whether it's with the children, whether it's in your neighbors, whatever. You don't got to worry about it because God says, I got you. But it comes at the point of submission. Mm. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord, hallelujah, they that's willing to give up my mind, they that's willing to give up my strength, they that's willing to give up my ways. Ooh, they shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Ha ha! My grace is sufficient. My strength is made perfect in your weaknesses. That's why Paul told us, don't think too highly of yourself. Because we're nothing. We're nothing. In one of us. Could fall because we're going to have temptations. We're going to have trials in our lives. And those trials, the enemy is trying to move you out of the place where you are in God. That's his desire. He really, he don't care nothing about you. You're not important, but it's to Jesus. That he wants to take advantage of. See, because what happens is when he moves you out of the way, what you're doing is tying up Jesus in you. And Jesus is not free to do what he wants to do in you. You tie him up, but you want to keep him free? Say no to self. Say no to our ways. Say no to my to our mind. That's why the scriptures and monsters up as high as the heavens 
above the earth. So are my thoughts above your thoughts. You see what? Now, we admonish people to get their education, but don't let the education get you. That's right. That's right. As long as you got the education, it's all right. But if the education gets you, see, because there are folks and rich folks out there, they look at you and they say, you foolish. Going down in that church and jumping and shouting and acting it all over, you still ain't got nothing. <laughs> well, do we? Do we have the power to walk through our day? Do we have the power to rebuke sin that they don't have? Because when they go home, they say, ooh, this pressure's getting to me. I got to have a drink. See, but we don't have to do that. We don't fall to those fleshly ways. We don't, and, and when the pressure gets too much for them, they'll, they'll take a 45 and but see, we submit to Jesus. We submit to Jesus. And they want to know, how in the world can you take what you're taking? Because I got Jesus. The thing that you're laughing at, I got Jesus. How does he, I don't see him handling, I don't see him working like that. You have to submit. When you submit, it's easy. Everything comes at the point of submission. But when you don't submit, as long as you got strength, as long as you got ideas, as long as you work to work your own ideas, God say, okay, go ahead. Go ahead. But now look at look at the, the apostle Paul. He 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 he, he bragged. He said, look. The Pharisee of the Pharisees. Ah, I studied at the feet of Gamil, the best prophet there was at that time. The man that knew the word inside and out. I got something from him. But when Jesus met him on the road, he said, Lord, what do I have to do? Submit. Submit. Now, Paul was a great apostle, but he didn't submit right away. God said, you're going to be blind for three days. And after three days, Paul looked, looked and was looking at his life. Man, all that I accomplished, all of my degrees, all of my accolades, and where am I? Sitting here in this hole, blind. And he said, <sighs> and God came, became his strength. He sent this man to him and said, go and pray for him. And when he came in there and prayed for him, he said, the scales fell from his eyes. And you check your word. The word says, immediately, Paul went to the temple and began to proclaim Jesus. What's your excuse? Why don't your testimony affect your household, your neighbors, your job? How come your testimony don't affect nobody? Have you surrendered? The strength of God comes at the point of submission. You want God's strength to be in you? Sometimes we listen to people's testimony and uh, I just say all the kids sometimes. He said when he's out there in the streets and people challenge him and God comes up on him and he lays his hand and prays for somebody and they go. <laughs> and you know what? People get jealous of that. God, I want to do that. Submit. Submit. Sometimes you, 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 you don't see a kid. Well, this man is in his room, laying on the floor, seeking God, asking God to change him. And then when he does go in the street, you see the results of submission. But then if you don't submit, and you go out there in the street, they'll chase you. <laughs> but power comes at the point of submission. 
Oh, I'll, I'll tell, tell you. you. See, you, see, you, you have, have to. Pastor Strong, Strong used to say, say every now and then God will lift the veil and let you seal something. And so all week long, I've been saying, Lord, what am I going to say to the people of God? And you know what? Monday, I didn't get nothing. Tuesday, I didn't get nothing. Wednesday, and I'm asking God all week now. Come on, God. I, 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 I got a title of pastor. I'm supposed to be able to say something to the people. Wednesday, nothing. Thursday, nothing. Friday, and I'm thinking, God, what's going on? Come on, God. Saturday, enjoying the family. Saturday night, Get ready to go to bed. God says, say, submit. submit. <laughs> submit. Well, 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 what is, what is, what is? Okay, okay so, so I, 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 he, he said, said, lay down. Lay down. Lay down. Lay down. So, so I laid down. And he began to pour. Woo. And I said, I'm sitting there, I'm laying there, and I God, that's, that's hard, hard to say, because people don't want to hear that. That's, That's what, what I, I said. said. Submit. Submit. My strength is made perfect in weakness. Hallelujah. When we submit, saints of God, God will come in. And he said, you can grow, you can stand up like eagles and take flight. In other words, you can go through your trials as if you didn't have a trial. Hell can be all around you, but you're still walking because you have the strength of God. Nothing can bother you. Nothing can slow you down because of the strength of God. But it comes at the point of submission. God bless you. Subject 
even to his mother and father to show us young people you can be obedient to your parents to love your parents and to love them that have the authority over you he showed us through the act of obedience that God can get to glory that God can elevate us that God can exalt us it's all in due time sometimes people want it right away but you gotta learn how to walk God daily. The pastor was teaching us how to walk daily and submit ourselves and pray like Jesus prayed, not my will, but Father, your will be done in me. Yes, it hurts. Yes, we suffer pain. Yes, we go uh, under certain things. But the uh, elder Rick Tassley was saying on the other side of through, he found great victory. He went through and God gave him great authority. Jesus went through. He overcame. He was a conqueror. And now he's seated at the right hand of the Father. I don't know about you, but I'm glad I got a mind and a will to say yes. Yes, Lord. Tell him yes. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. That's all God is looking for. So yes, Lord. Hey. And when we tell him yes, Jesus, would you stand with me today while, and while you're standing, if the word of the Lord found you today in any place that you see that you need to submit, I want you to close your eyes and pray with me and say yes in your spirit to the Lord, Father, in the name of Jesus, you know your word never comes without an effect and it has certainly touched us all today thank you for this shepherd that love your people love us enough to give us truth you said we shall know the truth the truth will make us free search us through the word today every one of us that's under the sound of my voice and those that are seemingly are struggling fighting to get close to you and the enemy keeps coming and they find themselves sometimes not victorious like they want to be father forgive today in the name of jesus and give strength to that which is weak for you said in your word when we are weak then we are strong forgive us today lord in the name of jesus and help us that this word will penetrate our hearts and our minds to be strong in the grace and the mercy of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And with this we give thanks today for you have said in your word if we would just call on you Lord that you would answer by prayer. We were receiving from you today by prayer. Victory! Victory! In the name of Jesus. And we thank you for it. 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 We thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus. And while we're standing, is there one in the building today that is not saved? Have not found the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. We want all the opportunity to you today to come to Jesus. Amen. Come while you have a chance. Amen. Don't let it be said too late. Is there one today that don't know Jesus? Amen. Well, we're so glad. You may be seated. Say amen to the past as he returned. Amen. Uh, in the book of First Corinthians, the twelfth chapter. 
Eleventh of Asar, eleventh chapter. Um, tomorrow, Sister, the homegoing of Sister Taylor, um, all of you that can and will, we need your help. We need ushers. Um, she is the 14th of 17 children. And uh, for the Sister Angela, she didn't think a lot of them were coming, but she said, they said they're coming. They're coming from all over the country. One is from Germany. They said they're coming. So she affected her family. And they want to be in her ongoing. So that, that's another lesson for us. Let your life speak to other people. Especially your family. You know, sometimes, uh, you know, I, I, when we have our times, can't get family to get together. But this is her last gathering. And her family says, I want to be there. So they're coming from all over Alabama, California, all down south. And Russia, yeah, got a, one's in Russia, they're coming. So when your life speaks, that's good. Amen. So like I said, she is the 14th. That's what I was told, 14th of, of 17. And she's figuring, well, over 100 people, family. Now, other people that know her, you know, people that she worked with in the state. Uh, so they will be coming also. So we need your help. Amen. We have uh, ushers, um, whatever we can do to give service. Amen. This is the time that we're taught we want to be servants. Well, well, opportunities present itself. Service. Tomorrow, 11.30, family, 12 o'clock noon. This ongoing service will begin. And uh, nurses, amen, anyone we can get to help, uh, we will certainly appreciate it. And I know the family will. Amen. So, amen tomorrow. All right. Um, we'll, we'll see, see you again, again Tuesday, Tuesday. Bible study after, after the long Lord service. Tuesday, Bible study at 6. But, but first, first Corinthians, the 11th chapter. And I'm not going to read all of this, but Paul said, For I have received of the Lord that which also I deliver unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And, and when, when he, he had given things, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took the cup. When he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do you, this do you, as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. And, and, and that word remembrance, can you remember what he brought you from? Because some of us were in a mess. Ah, we were in a mess. Now sometimes we we don't like to look that bad, you know. Well, I wasn't that. yes we were. We were some rotten to the core people. I mean, if you just, you say, I didn't do all of that, and you tell them why, oh God. That's, that's, that's worse than anything. anything. God, God said, no, no, no lie shall, shall tell you in his sight. That's, that's, that's terrible. Well, well that, that covers, covers all of us, don't it? All of us. All of us. So, God, God is saying, hey, hey do, do you remember where you come from? Do you remember how I brought you out? Do you remember how I saved your life? You remember how I made you to be somebody when you wasn't nobody? Do you remember? That's all he said, remember. And every time you do this, he said, remember. Now, this is not done every month just so you can say, well, I took the communion. No, no, no. It's to remind you 
Jesus did something for me. He did. He saved my life. He, he gave me life when all I had was death. Woo. I can remember times breaking into people's houses didn't have no business. Breaking into people's houses scared to death. Police wouldn't go down the street, you know, and you know how the street might curve or something. Crawling across the street so the man won't see me. What a mess. What a mess. Woo. But God saved me. God, God saved me. Hallelujah. God, God saved me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. God, God saved me. And, and I'm, I'm so glad. glad. I ain't got to hide behind bushes no more. I don't have to crawl across the street like a dog no more. I'm glad God saved me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And all he said is remember where I brought you from. Because all of us have a past. We may not want to hold on to it, but we have a past. Oh, I tell you, young folks, stay, keep yourself pure. Keep your minds pure. Keep your bodies pure. Don't go into the, 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 the mess that the world has. You know, drinking, smoking, and uh, cocaine and all this other stuff. All it's doing is going to wear on your body. And when you get to our age, isn't it something you can see us walking around, but then you see other folks with a stick? Can't hide and make it. Look where they came from. That stuff wears on your body. It will corrupt your tissues. You look at the commercials. People tell me, well, what's that one? They called COPD. They said, when you can't breathe, well, don't smoke. Don't smoke. I don't care how cool they make it look. Don't smoke. Because your lungs is the only set you got. And if you mess them up, <sighs> I got an ex-brother-in-law. And the man is 300 pounds. He look like but you let him walk a few steps, wheezing. All because, I don't care how cool it looks, it's gonna wear on you. It's gonna take a toll on your body. And when you want in your elder years, you don't have to wait that long, but when you wanna be able to, cause I wanna be able to get up and do on my own. I don't want nobody helping me up and, you know. So I'm glad that I have the strength and the help that I have. And I'm not trying to mess it up none. But when you see people, you know, they, it's, it, it's because they didn't take heed to the warnings, to the health, the healthy things that we are being taught. Now I tell my brother, when they bring him lunch or dinner, whatever it is when I'm there, I say, James, eat your vegetables. He said, you eat them. But now, James is not, can't even get out the bed now. He'll feel fall. No strength, he won't eat. Well, what do you expect? I wished I could do what I used to do, eat your food. You eat it. Well, so, but remember where God brought you from. Take heed to the words that you are being taught today, okay? Amen. And, and if you do happen to fall into something, just look at the size of pack, and they tell you right there, this thing is detrimental to your health. It says it right on the package. So true. Well, it's not going to give you a thrill. No. Makes you stink. Now, preacher, you ain't supposed to be saying, well, I'm just telling you what it is. <laughs> Down there at, at, the, at the fair the other night, I'm sitting on this little bench, and this lady come around and sit behind me, 
and she had a baby there in the in the stroller, and she lit up. Well, I just couldn't help myself. I turned around and I said, "Young lady, when did you start that?" I wish I could quit. I said, "You got a good reason to quit. Look at that baby." And you leaning down there, kissing on that baby, you think that just because you blew your smoke, that's going to stop? That baby can smell. And you're giving that baby the after effects of your cigarette. Now, if that baby gets sick, who are you going to blame? She got her little carton. Well, remember where God brought you from. Remember how he brought you out. Amen. Um, thank you, Jesus. It's remarkable. The human, and Deacon Bonner often talks about it, the pride that people have. You know, instead of admitting, I need help, oh, I can shake it anytime I want to. If you could do that, you'd have done it last year. Thank you, Jesus. But we do this because we want you to know this is serious. Everywhere you go, you take Jesus with you. Now, where are you going to take Jesus? Today, tomorrow, next week? Ah, Father God, we come before you this day. Fathers, we come to the table to partake of your body and of your blood. God, help us to remember. Hallelujah! Help us to remember the great sacrifice that you gave that we might be changed. Help us, oh God. Help us, Lord. Give us a, to have a, a sound mind, sound words. Oh God, as we go through life, as we speak, as we, as we approach other people, give us to be a light unto your people, God. We thank you for it now. Thank you for Jesus. These are the blessings we ask in Jesus' name. Thank God. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord.
trying to test your vocabulary or anything, but I want you to remember. I want you to think. Every word, the Bible tells us every idle word, every idle deed shall be called in the judgment. Amen. So we want you to think when we come here. So as we part ready to partake of the bread, let's repeat after me. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Strength, my strength and my redeemer. Let us commune together. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And whatever ailments you might have, whatever pain or whatever, you know, God's a healer. And the, the choir is saying the blood still works. So as we partake of the blood of Jesus, let it apply in every area of your life, whatever the area, whatever the situation might be. But before we partake, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Let us commune together. Jesus said, drink you all of it. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. God bless you. One day when I was gone, he died for the cross. I know it was love. He died for the cross. I know it was love. He died for the cross. I know it was love. He died for the cross. I know it was love. He died for the cross. I know it was love. He died for the cross. I know it was love. He